IPMNation.com. IPM Nation presents Angry Drunk Tales. <laughs> Me write angry emails. Episode 6. Don't tell Napoleon Bonaparte. I told you, but you're fucked. Hi everyone, welcome to episode 6 of Angry Drunk Tales here on IPM Nation, our ongoing uh, series examining uh, the uh, featuring the emails, the long rambling drunken emails of the twisted mind Yes, that would take a medical professional to diagnose. So um, not to skip ahead, but just to kind of give you a quick um, sort of present day update on what's going on as we continue to work our way through the story, uh, because we will get to here eventually, um, just so everyone understands. Uh, please uh, stick with the show, because as you listen to the show and as the story unfolds, it's only going to get better and better, because uh, as we record this now... Uh, it's actually, we'll kind of pull back the curtain on this a little bit, break the fourth wall. It's actually Sunday night. This show we don't do live. We record it in advance. And uh, as we sit here on Sunday night at the Uptown Auto Repair Studio, uh, we last night received yet another barrage. Actually, I think more than 10 angry emails from... And by the way, he's now copying other people on these emails. Yes, yes. Actually, I believe there's five other individuals that have been copied on these emails. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, uh, we will protect their anonymity and only refer to them by first name if needed. Um, but, yes, uh, for some reason, last evening, uh, Eduardo decided that he needed to send off yet another barrage of emails about people he has had nothing to do with mm -hmm. for going on a month now. Um, so really, you're going to want to stay tuned because listen closely to what you hear and how it changes throughout because yeah. it, it just gets more twisted and interesting. And I, I will have to give credence uh to my co-partner here matt for being able to read some of the language which i personally even though i have reread it a number of times and an, am a college educated individual i cannot make sense of the of what the sentences are well the drunkard gets as the evening progresses you know the, the more difficulty he has in typing things that are um, you know, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, uh, and, and there are a lot of typos and misspellings and, you know, an email that he's written, um, at, uh, 3 AM when he's maybe on, uh, number eight of the 12 pack he's consuming, uh, that evening, You're uh, giving him an awful lot of I know, leeway at I that know. time of the day. We're usually yeah. past the 12 pack have yeah. gone down to the seven 11 to buy another one. Right. And I'm now cracking over that 12 pack. But by the time it's four 30 AM, that uh, 12 pack is gone. And the emails are less, uh, coherent than the ones uh, written at three 30 AM. Very much so. so. And, yes. and you will notice, um, as we read through these emails that they, uh, please stick with us and you may need to replay on occasion uh, in order to make sense to follow well, what you have because he does jump from subject to subject and it can be a little difficult. So we're going to do our best to present it to you in a way that is easy to follow. Well, not only that, but there's a lot of foreshadowing, you know, and, and uh, you'll notice that. I mean, I'm noticing that. I'm realizing as I look back at some of these early emails now even when we were on his good side, there was some foreshadowing of what was to come. Aside from the obvious foreshadowing is just like he started treating Napoleon Bonaparte terribly and, and with great hostility in, in these emails, he would eventually turn that on to us. 
But uh, but but there's a lot of little yes. clues about yes. about what was going on in the back of his mind that he hadn't yet brought to the forefront. And it does seem to be that he is an individual that has to have something to complain about at all times. Mm-hmm. As in, in between complaining about Napoleon Bonaparte and complaining about us was complaining about his co-workers at Brothers, yes. which he does mention quite frequently in emails. Yes. Uh, he would complain about uh, uh, Joel, uh, you know, will will uh, withhold the, the last names, of course. But uh, Absolutely. We, but, do, uh, we do not in any way want to disparage any individual, so we will refer to first names only. But if uh, if Loser, baby. employer Joel happens to hear this, uh, yes, he has quite a bit to say about you behind your back and and uh, how stupid he thinks you are. <laughs> to be frank, he did a, say that about him. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And but but we but we digress. Yeah, so, so there's so a lot to look forward to stage. in the series. One other comment, though, I have is um, I, I, I realized something that occurred to me today. I don't know if this series is ever going to end because even when we catch up, because in theory we'll eventually catch up and be in the present day at, at, at the point in this endless chain of emails. And sends us but then again i realized that might actually never happen we may never catch up until he, he sent us more some... he sent us more than 10 emails last night of this rambling right and um that that's haven't... that's more than five episodes in a week it's for me personally it's been well over a month since i was under the same roof yeah to continually um send me emails and i'll give a little bit and send me emails that say i'm not supposed to send you emails but <laughs> yeah and then goes on to the ramblings when we're right, because not I, there well to clarify because at one point he had agreed to send emails only to me well, and, that he actually, was, and he actually did stick with that for a little while uh, you were yeah you were trying to get me to le- you were trying to get him to leave me alone while right. i was in the hospital but yeah. you know we're getting a little too far ahead of ourselves yeah let's get but into, i don't know if this series is ever going to end this could be this could go on for years this might be a multi-year series i don't think it will be i think eventually he'll have some other fixation you know napoleon bonaparte was a fixation yeah. Brothers is a fixation. We're now the fixation. Somewhere along the line, there'll be something else. And right. then that will become the meat and potatoes of his rambling emails. Yeah. But I, I would love to get to tonight's dramatic reading. Well, uh, one other thing, too, I need to explain before we get into it is uh, we'll, we'll be uh, at, from time to time. We'll have to do this. We're going to break format a little bit with the show because typically we like to feature one of <laughs> long, rambling, drunken, uh, clinically insane emails per episode, of which I will do a dramatic reading. However, at this particular point, this is definitely a story arc. And at this particular (laughs) point in our story, uh, there are several short emails as we begin to say goodbye to Napoleon Bonaparte. As Napoleon Bonaparte begins to move out of the story. And that chapter of the story uh, closes, begins to close at this point. So we're at the point now where, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte is in Denver. And um, but there's been all this. Well, when we left off in episode five, uh, baby. was trying to uh, get Napoleon Bonaparte to release the lease. But they had had their big falling out, their big uh, their big uh, kerfuffle. Um, Napoleon Bonaparte had then uh, finally r- relented when he was here visiting uh, and then ended up going back to Denver and then getting pissed off all over again. Uh, you know, and Angela had already moved in and, and all this stuff was going on. So while, while all this is going on and uh, in our last episode, I read the email where, uh, well, there were several emails, but one where baby. was uh, the last email that had sent to Napoleon Bonaparte threatening to have a bunch of uh, gay black guys come over and have an orgy on Napoleon him. Bonaparte this is bad and film it and make money with it and all that specifically with large black cocks yes he yes. was very specific about that huge uh, huge numerous, cocks he said huge cocks black yes. guys with all huge cocks multiple times sexy and 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 you may want to bear that in mind because it does seem to be a theme that runs throughout his 
tail. Yes. In these emails that he's he writes fixated on, on huge cocks. So, is what you're saying. Loser, baby. Um, likes huge cocks. What we have here is a biography of an individual who's simply written these things down, and we now present those writings to you in an auto biographical form yes. along with some history so you can understand the setting of the events by the way i'm going to trademark that as soon as we're done with uh tonight's episode i, I, I need to trademark likes huge cocks because because uh, eventually when the show really takes off and it's huge and it's this big famous show we're going to need merchandising so we're going to need t-shirts and stickers and magnets uh, for the show that say on the like huge cocks. What do you think? Um, I'm just throwing it out there. A, I mean, maybe some people well, might like that. Give, give it all the consideration you it know, deserves. Absolutely. I mean, it should be. Um, maybe it's it's cocks. Yes. Maybe it's a shorter. You know, one of those circular email, uh, stickers that people have on their cars. You know, they went to New Hampshire, so they got to be where its cocks are. Yes. <laughs> uh, so where we left off, it was May 4th, that last barrage of emails. Now it is the morning of May 5th, and we wake up to this. This is a very short email from baby. Uh, to you and I and Napoleon Bonaparte. In all caps, he says, I am not taking over the lease. And then in small caps, he says, well, not caps. There's no such thing as small caps. I'm sorry. But you know what I mean. And then he says, I need to take care of. See, here's some foreshadowing for you folks. I need to take care of myself first and foremost. And seeing as how Napoleon Bonaparte wants to make this difficult, I am planning on calling two friends today, each of whom made offers back in December and go from there. Sorry about this. But in the end, playing childish games with Napoleon Bonaparte has become tiring to me. So that was a very short email. And by the way, you can tell he wrote that first thing in the morning uh, and not uh, during his drunken binge the previous evening, not only because of the brevity of it, but because it was uh, correct grammar. He even used whom instead of who. Uh, correct grammar, punctuation, everything. Very impressive. So you, you, he apparently was not inebriated when those he wrote are, that. Those uh, are rare moments. Yes. There are those rare moments of clarity that we saw on occasion. Yes. So we were disheartened by this. So I wrote back to him. I said, I still think it makes sense to see if the landlord will just transfer the lease to us. Because at this point, he had signed a new lease with dong, 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 dong. And the landlord. Right. He had already signed a lease in April. Right. But then, but then because Napoleon Bonaparte changed his mind, then there was this whole question, well, is this new lease that just signed valid? Right. You know, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte had said he was leaving. Now he was saying he was right. evicting and us, the, but it, leaving it, anyway or something. It was crazy. It, it it got so convoluted and confusing. Nobody knew which end was up. Yeah. So then I said, you know, basically I said, you know, if, if you're if you're sure about not sticking around, then fine. But I would like to to go talk to. Dong, 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 dong. So. uh wrote back i can't say i'm sure but it's very difficult to even talk to uh it's tiring even trying and that's a reference to uh as a vietnamese immigrant and does not speak english fluently he knows enough english to, to you know yes, you can yes. have a conversation and with him, he's but, the but he's not owner. fluent he's a homeowner yes and he rents out the two floors above the floor he lives in and he is a very nice man extremely i, nice. I felt badly Ex for him through all of this very much so because he kind of got stuck in the middle and didn't know what to do for a boy napoleon bonaparte and didn't know what to do with right so then uh, I said, I'm going to go talk to him right now then. And that's what I did. I went downstairs to talk to dong, 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 dong. myself. Now, I had been reluctant to do that up to this point. The reason being, my thought process was, just like with Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte was the leaseholder, and we were essentially Napoleon Bonaparte as tenants. And I thought it made more sense to have 
one person be the leaseholder who is in charge, who deals directly with the uh, the landlord, not not too many cooks in the kitchen. And that's why I wanted there to be a similar situation with... Loser, baby. I wanted Loser, baby. to be the guy. I just thought it made more sense. Well, but he offered to, to be the guy. Right. He offered to be the guy. He offered to take over the lease. And then you received the, the previously read email that right. says he's changing his mind. That's why I was reluctant to insert myself into this. Um, and, and that's also because a he theme. also said he had it under control. Right. He right. showed us the lease when, it got, when he had signed. Yeah. Um, so even when things were going wrong, it was yeah. like, no, too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't want to involve myself. But... Uh, in not one but two situations, the other one we'll get to in a moment, I had to involve myself because Loser, couldn't get it done. He, he just couldn't, couldn't navigate these waters, so I had to step in. Um, actually, that, that, that's also a recurring theme in our, in our story, isn't it? It is a recurring Me theme. Me having it. to inject myself into situations that I really didn't want to have to do, but I had to do it. Uh, so this is, I guess, exhibit A of when this happened. So I said, I'm going to talk to him right now then. So I went downstairs and talked to Tom. And I said, look, I know what's going on. You've got a new lease with but now Napoleon Bonaparte. He isn't leaving and he's making things difficult and this and that. I said, and now, now we knew at this point that the upstairs family was moving out. So I said, can we all just move upstairs? Until Napoleon Bonaparte says lease is done and then move back downstairs. I'm sorry. Can we all just move up? Yeah. Can we all just move upstairs? In other words, Napoleon Bonaparte wanted us out June 1st. Right. And his lease was up July 1st. But he thought initially it was up June 1st. Right. And so, we got wind that our landlord was evicting the people that lived above us right which we had nothing to do with we, because we there were, were 20 just people in a two-bedroom apartment right and there were a lot of other things going on with this particular family that was making life miserable for right. them on the first floor and this will be relevant later in the story too but this was the beginning of may napoleon bonaparte this was trying to evict us for june 1st even though his lease was going to be up july 1st so I, we basically said okay fine we'll play his childish stupid pointless game so i said to tong, 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 tong. can we all at on june 1st move upstairs because the other family was going to be out by june 1st we'll move upstairs for one month and then when napoleon bonaparte his lease is up on july 1st we'll all just move back downstairs so because napoleon bonaparte won't give up the lease we'll go through this whole dog and pony show of having to move upstairs for a month but if that's what we got to do that's what we got to do. And tong, 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 tong. agreed to that and said, yes, that's fine. Absolutely. Because right, at that point, he had not secured new tenants for that particular unit. Right. And he wasn't sure what he, he was going to be dealing with yeah, up there he, when he finally got in there to see what kind of damage there was. Yeah. And he didn't want to end up with two empty units. Right. Because if we all left just because of Napoleon Bonaparte, then he was going to have a, an empty house. So. So I made it right. I interjected myself. I made things good. I went back upstairs. I got. Loser, baby. I said, here's what I worked out with. Tong, 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 tong. Will you please go downstairs and talk to him with me? So together, because you are the new leaseholder, we can make sure that everything's cool. And Loser, baby. I said, OK, great. And we did that. And everything was good. And everybody was happy. And then, of course, uh, like five minutes after all this happens, now Loser, baby. is changing his tune and saying, well, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte probably can't make us leave anyway, at which point I'm, 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 I'm trying to be polite about it. But in my mind, I'm going, holy fucking shit. That's what I've been saying all along. And no one wanted to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, you did. You did. You did. Jesus yes, you Christ. Did. I've been saying all along. Napoleon Bonaparte can't make us leave. <laughs> but no as one wanted as, to fucking and, listen and to me. For the legalities <laughs> of that, as long as you can show that you've been paying rent yeah, yeah. and you've received I'll a say, couple of yeah. pieces of mail at that address, then it's your legal tenancy. So there has to be an eviction process. Yeah. Napoleon Bonaparte. And that's no important to, to know out. because that's something that also plays into future emails is understanding the legalities of the law. Oh, yeah. In that once you've received mail there, um, which in fact 
I did, I know for certain a number of times, um, then that becomes your legal residence. Yeah. So then uh, we get an email from... Actually, I think this one might have gone only to me. That probably went to you as well. Um, Not necessarily. This I mean, this is uh, know. this this will give will give this one a dramatic. This will be the dramatic reading for this episode. This one is important because no, we'll we'll do two dramatic readings for this episode because this one's relatively relatively short. Okay, I think that sounds um, like a wonderful idea. But this one is uh, uh, emailing me. Uh, but he's not mad at me in this. That comes much later. He's mad at Napoleon Bonaparte. But this is important because uh, this is where we get the first um, where it, there begins to appear to be a threat to Napoleon Bonaparte, his personal belongings. All right. So this is his email to me later that day on May 5th. How about we figure out tomorrow how we can have you guys and Angela change rooms? We cannot put our lives on hold because of Napoleon Bonaparte. Seems to me this is not that big of a problem unless Napoleon Bonaparte is asked about it. I think it's time we consider ways to keep Napoleon Bonaparte out of our lives in more real ways. To the point I am thinking of paying for storage unit, a storage unit for his shit for three months. So he doesn't even have to come back here to get his shit. I can't live forever either storing shit for him. I think we all need to sit down and consider ideas that work for us. Because right now, we are all working around Napoleon Bonaparte. His inability to do anything. There has to be a way to resolve this situation where we are all being faced to basically live as refugees. Napoleon Bonaparte. Does not live here in six months, and he is not really the person paying rent anyways. It seems we need to start making decisions so that the front room does not look like a storage facility. Because if legal issues arrive, I can see that causing issues. That is, if this apartment looks like a storage facility, it makes it difficult to say we live here as well. Just trying to figure this all out. But the way that room looks right now, we would have a difficult time, a difficult argument. What we are the real tenant. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Moving Napoleon Bonaparte this shit into storage and you guys into your appropriate rooms seems to me a good way to prove possession. He would have a difficult time proving why all of his stuff was in storage, even though he claims he lives here. We are playing Napoleon Bonaparte. His game still, basically. The best bet to prove our legitimacy would be to move his shit into that storage area and then you guys switch rooms and all is as once was discussed. I can see no real reason why we have not done this already as he was supposed to have moved out two weeks ago. Another two weeks and he has no claim over any of his shit. New Hampshire law is 30 days from the time you give notice of vacating or have physically vacated. He physically vacated six months ago but declared his intention to vacate on April 28th and again on April 29th. We are all well within our rights to move his shit to storage right now. I've been trying to make this easy for Napoleon Bonaparte, despite all of his crap. And that has made this difficult for the rest of us. So any suggestions would be appreciated before I move his shit to a storage unit and tell him how long I've made the payments on that unit for. I have no intention of keeping his shit. But when July 1st comes up and he hasn't got his shit and I have paid to store it, well, in that situation, all bets are off. I am taking over this lease. I really don't want my domicile to look like a storage unit until Napoleon Bonaparte gets his shit together. I am putting off a number of things I could be doing right away just because Napoleon Bonaparte has shit stored here. That bugs me. I mean, if I take this lease, I want it to be a place I can be ha proud to have friends over and such. And a big part of that is not having boxes full of stuff stored in the front room, making the place look like a storage unit. Right now, I understand why this is occurring. Napoleon Bonaparte. This has created a very difficult situation for everyone, but I am sure there are ways to fix this. I already moved this shit once, so fuck it. 
I can be the asshole again. Personally, I am tempted to rent a storage unit away from the apartment, and when he comes finally with a U-Haul, just telling him where his shit is, and allowing time to see if we missed anything. I can pay for a storage unit until July 1st, the end of his lease. And it seems to me this would actually keep all of us from dealing with this drama anymore. It's important to note that at this point, Napoleon Bonaparte, his belongings had been removed from the bedroom that Angela was occupying and had been placed in the front room. The reason for this was that Napoleon Bonaparte had shown up one day and he went into what was his bedroom where half the room had all of his things and the other half was full of Angela's things who he had invited to live there. And he decided to take one of Angela's boxes that had a laptop and clothing in it, flip it over, dumping her laptop and clothing on the floor, stated a well, and then proceeded to take that box and load it with a few items that he wanted to take with him. This, of course, disturbed Angela to no end, um, given the laptop that was dropped as well as her things, and she felt very violated and did not want to have any part of having to live around Napoleon Bonaparte. his belongings mm -hmm. anymore, and therefore um, all of his things were taken and put into the living room. Yeah. I um, Through all of this, by the way, I was really trying to, as much as I could possibly control the situation, trying to be the diplomat in all of this, and trying to uh, get... Loser, baby to just calm down about moving Napoleon Bonaparte his stuff, moving it to a storage unit, his constant bitching about Napoleon Bonaparte the stuff being in the way. All I wanted was to just keep keep it simple, keep it calm, keep it cool. Keep it until, peaceful. Until Napoleon Bonaparte just, you know, if that Napoleon Bonaparte needs time, let him have the time to absolutely, get his stuff. Absolutely. What's the big deal? We just want to, we just don't want any more drama. But just wanted more drama. And then when Napoleon Bonaparte did what he did, it gave more reason to add more emails. Mm -hmm. And then yes. we go to <laughs> the next one. Well, so then what happens is, so I emailed. And at this point, I said, we'll just stay in here and not switch rooms. It sucks because we wanted that room because Angela had the bigger room. The, uh, but we can't possibly move in. Napoleon Bonaparte. This room before July 1st when Napoleon Bonaparte is out of our lives. Because if we move into there, it's going to create even more trouble the next time. Napoleon Bonaparte is here. At least he knows Angela is in there and likes her. Because as far as we knew, Napoleon Bonaparte didn't have any direct problem with Angela. Well, he was um, the one that had, had told her to move in. Right. And on we, May 1st. Uh, on May yeah. 1st. And, <laughs> and, and we got the call on, you know, May 1st. When can I start bringing my stuff over? We're all going, yeah. what? So I, nobody knew but Napoleon Bonaparte about Angela. Right. So I said, it's going to be a bad scene when he sees our stuff in there. What if we're not home and he gets in here? I'm going to come home to a broken MacBook and broken audio equipment because he's the kind of douche that would wreck or steal somebody's property if he's pissed, especially if one of his drug dealer friends is with him. I understand your desire to pull together the place now, so we'll just keep this room as it will, uh, as it is, uh, to avert some potential out Napoleon Bonaparte drama. And by the way, I didn't. Uh, I, I do want to say this, especially in case Napoleon Bonaparte is listening. I don't really believe that Napoleon Bonaparte would have gone in there and just started breaking shit. But I really wanted to. I was kind of overplaying it a little bit because I was well, trying I to get to understand our concern because kept pushing this thing about switching rooms right and, and we just wanted and it to just wasn't worth just, it to me just wait it, it yeah. wasn't worth it. It, it we were already comfortable we could yeah. just it, there was no big deal to wait yeah but after napoleon bonaparte you know flipped the box and there was a laptop in there then we knew that you know he really didn't care about other people's property so right. there was a real good reason to be concerned about moving things around that we just said, you know what, leave it alone. Yeah. We're, we were, we're here. We're already unpacked. We're in the room. We'll just stay where we are. Right. 
Now, uh, so then I decided to, because I kept thinking about this whole thing, like, I don't, I don't want to do this whole bullshit uh, where we have to move upstairs for a month and then move back downstairs. And even though I felt like everyone kind of finally understood <laughs> that we weren't going to have to do that, I wanted to make sure. So I decided, and I think I discussed it with you before I did it, I said, you know what, I'm going to send Napoleon Bonaparte an email, because I'm a natural diplomat. I can I can do this. I'm going to appeal to Napoleon Bonaparte because I also was the one person who had not had any conflict with him. Well, neither had Angela, but you and did both had conflict with him. Which I still never figured out how that happened because I really didn't. Well, you sent him a couple of angry text messages. That was after, though. Mm. That was after he got into it with. No, this well maybe. But, right. but but you did let, have let, conflict with him. I was the only was, one who had no conflict, conflict with him. Absolutely, Al, there Al, was some Al, conflict. Al, Napoleon Bonaparte and I had not had a crossword between Looking us back up to now, this point. Now I can see where that conflict was caused by. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I sent the following email to Napoleon Bonaparte on May fifth at twelve forty one p.m. Uh, and this is the second example of me interjecting myself into this situation. Napoleon Bonaparte. I've been reluctant to... In well, that's funny as I said it in the first uh, sentence. Napoleon Bonaparte. I've been reluctant to inject myself into the whole debacle surrounding the apartment. However, as the one person in all this who prefers to keep the emotion out of everything and handle things in a friendly, professional, business-like manner, and since you and I have never had a crossword or conflict between us, I've decided to reach out to you directly and see if we can discuss this reasonably, since as far as I'm concerned, nobody involved in this has handled anything very well. At this point, here's where we are. You have made your intention to evict us known, and we are to be out by the end of the month. Your original lease is in effect until July 1, as I understand. There are a few legal issues with evicting us, but let's put that aside for now. This morning, Ed and I went downstairs to speak to the landlord together to sort this out. Again, I wanted to avoid getting directly involved, but I felt compelled to. Tom seems like a very nice and reasonable man who appears to be as bewildered uh, by recent events as we are. But the tentative solution that we came to is this. Since you are the leaseholder until July 1 and you desire for us to be out by June 1, we will comply and move upstairs to that vacant apartment for one month. Then on July 1, when your lease has expired, we will move back downstairs. We could simply stay upstairs, except that it's only a two-bedroom, so somebody will be sleeping in the living room for a month. This way, we can leave the apartment to you for June, as you desire, but we can continue to live in the building, and Jen and Angela and myself can continue to be roommates, as we all get along well and would prefer to stick together. This also benefits the landlord, as he doesn't want two vacant apartments instead of just one and would like to keep us as tenants, not to mention being able to honor the lease that he already signed with. So while going through the whole dog and pony show of moving upstairs for one month is a hassle, it appears to be the best solution for us and for Kong, 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 Kong. at this time if you insist on us leaving. None of us have a ton of stuff, so the move will be quick in both directions. The reason that I'm explaining this to you is because I would like to make one last appeal to you to simply go with the original agreement and just let take the lease. Because the fact is, not only would it be easier for us, but it's easier for you. If you keep the apartment, you're responsible for the rent for June. If we simply revert to the original agreement, you can get your security deposit back from Kong, 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 Kong. and get away clean. So to go that route benefits not just us, but you as well. I know that you have a concern about your possessions, but I will personally guarantee to you now that absolutely nothing bad will happen to your stuff. Did <laughs> jump the gun by moving your stuff around? Yes, I think so. I didn't agree with him doing that and would have preferred that he waited. But I also know that his heart was in the right place. An error in judgment, perhaps, but he was very concerned about making room for Angela and making her feel welcome, as she was, of course, told by you that she could move in on May 1. Look, all cards on the table. Nothing is going to happen to your things regardless. I know that made some very, shall we say, colorful suggestions about what could happen to your possessions, but I would never stand by and allow anyone's property to be destroyed or damaged.
Regardless of how anyone feels, it's not the correct way to handle anything, and it won't happen on my watch, regardless of what you decide to do. As I stated, it's not just better for us, but it's better for you. You don't have to hurry or feel rushed to get your things. I'll make sure they are fine and secure. But I'm asking you to look at this from a business perspective. You're a smart guy. You've got a lot on your plate, and you don't need all this distraction. You also wouldn't be where you are at 25 if you were stupid. So I'm asking you to please consider this from a business and financial standpoint. And if you and Loser, baby. can't play nice with each other, then fine. Just communicate directly with me going forward. I hope that you'll consider this. This will be my only email making this request, as I will respect whatever decision you make and won't harass you about it. If you don't respond at all, I'll assume that you still want us to leave at the end of the month. So that was my email that Napoleon Bonaparte kind of stroking right. his ego a bit, kissing his ass, reassuring him about his things. But this was also part of the reason why later in the story, when uh, baby. is playing all kinds of havoc with Napoleon Bonaparte, his possessions, I'm freaking out because it's like, God damn it. I promised this guy nothing would happen to his shit and things are happening to his shit. You know, I had to make that promise. Right. To, to smooth things over and, and, and Loser, baby. It ends up just completely disregarding, disrespecting all of that, uh, which was very frustrating to me. I still feel ba- I do. I even now I legit I feel badly about that. I really do. I know. I can understand how you feel like that. And I don't understand why Napoleon Bonaparte just never came back. Yeah never communicated or anything because well I mean, that that shows up later in the story as well but. and he did know that we are or, or ourselves had storage units that we could even if we needed to make sure that we could protect us stuff but that's not the way that things ended up folding out right uh so then Ap- napoleon bonaparte eventually uh wrote back and simply said works for me And then I got another email from him that same day uh, that said, let's do that. Sorry, this job has been a killer. Yeah, it makes it easy for everyone to just do the original agreement. So there we go. So at that point, uh, everything was smoothed over. By the way, Napoleon Bonaparte uh, kept uh, he did keep his word about communicating directly with me. Uh, He did not uh, send any more emails until once again uh reignited conflict directly with napoleon bonaparte later on but in the interim napoleon bonaparte kept his word he when he had questions about the deposit about about the security deposit when was paying that so he napoleon bonaparte could get his back or or questions about when uh would it be appropriate for him to come get his stuff he he communicated directly with me yep. and he and left there that were alone even some dates that were set up which unfortunately and we never knew why napoleon bonaparte didn't show up right yeah he kept saying he was going to show up on this date or that date and then never did yeah i'll be there monday yeah which is I'll bizarre wednesday yeah and, and we never did know why that happened but there were a lot of attempts to try and keep things exactly as you had gotten them arranged right so then i let know about the email by the way i never sent a copy of the email that i sent out napoleon bonaparte i wanted to keep out of that never saw the actual email um but uh but uh, i told about it and that you know i had intervened and everything was fine and i fixed it so then uh later uh oh oh, a couple days later sends me this can you send an appropriately worded email to napoleon bonaparte asking him about his stuff and when he intends to retrieve it uh, as we are trying to paint and his TV is holding the process up, uh, remind him that he said the 18th of May, uh, not trying to push this, but a big portion of the security deposit for me uh, gets removed if I get this painting done. Um, because I- Napoleon Bonaparte that said he would come get his stuff by the 18th. And... 
pushing me to confirm that with him. And I wrote back, I said, I think the smart play is wait and see if he sticks to the 18th. If he doesn't, then I can inquire. But I don't want to rock the boat with him either. Not now that things are peaceful. From what I recall, part of what set him off last time he was here was that he was feeling rushed. Let's not poke the bear if we don't have to. And then wrote back and said, yeah, okay, but really need to move his TV sometime this weekend to paint that room. And I wrote back and said, well, yeah, we can move it away from the wall, certainly. And uh, yeah, he was really in a hurry to do the painting. Yeah, he just decided. And I don't know who does this, you know, rents an apartment and then decides they want to repaint all the walls and change fixtures and things like that. It's kind of an unusual thing to do when you're renting. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was what he wanted to do. Yeah. And then there was a little more back and forth with Napoleon Bonaparte about dates uh, just between he and I about when he might come. Like you said, he, you know, he kept saying he was going to show up and then he wouldn't. Uh, but it was it was cordial between him and I, um, you know, he said he'd be there by June 1st. And, and then, uh, you know, I think uh, June 1st came and went and he never showed up. It was it was all uh, very strange. Um, and then we get to. uh <laughs> was getting pissed off that Napoleon Bonaparte wasn't keeping to the uh, the dates uh, where uh, where he, he said he was going to show up. So then decided to because Napoleon Bonaparte was in the um, the ATM business. Yep. Uh, having several ATMs here in Manchester took it upon himself because he knew a few of the people a few of the restaurant owners or whomever, a few of the businesses that had these ATMs, and sent them this. And this will be our final dramatic reading for this episode, because next episode we got a we got something very we have a very interesting plot twist coming in episode seven. But we'll finish off episode six with this. This is the email that sent to uh, the people he knows who had ATMs in their businesses. <clears throat> You recently got an ATM machine through Napoleon Bonaparte. What Napoleon Bonaparte never told you, but once joked to me about. I moved with it, in with him as a roommate. He has since moved out, and I am supposed to take over the lease on Monday. So I need you to keep this under your hat as far as bitching to Napoleon Bonaparte until Monday. But for a month, it has bothered me that someone I do basically respect and have no hard feelings about is going to get fucked July 1st because none of the ATMs he put out there are compliant with the new regulations coming out July 1st. They are incapable of reading the chip on the card and even having them around could get you into some serious legal trouble because of this issue. Meanwhile, Mr. Napoleon Bonaparte has moved to Colorado to pursue other opportunities. I'm asking you to please, please do not contact Napoleon Bonaparte about this until Monday. But I don't want to see people I know in New Hampshire getting taken advantage of by an asshole from New York either. <laughs> but since I have waited over a month to tell you this and your cutoff date with that machine is fastly approaching, I thought I might. I thought you might appreciate the opportunity to do something about it. But contacting Napoleon Bonaparte before Monday only makes things more difficult for me and my new roommates some of whom you might actually know, as they are active in New Hampshire Republican politics. I do know he has machines as well at the Wild Rover and Panucci's, but I do not know the owners of those places. If you know them and feel they might need this information, then you should send it along. So, and what's interesting about this, and you'll, you'll hear this as our story continues, not the first time <laughs> decides to... Uh, sort of uh, try to inject himself and potentially sabotage somebody's business. Yes, absolutely. And not that only that. That becomes a pattern. Yes. Not only is he attempting to sabotage Napoleon Bonaparte. His business prospects, he is also going after his reputation and everything else with other businesses that Napoleon Bonaparte had worked with. Yes. And saying, you know, I'm going to tell you this information, but, you know, don't, don't share it till after Monday, but you should know that this guy that you did business with is going to screw you over. 
and I'm just doing my duty as a citizen to warn you. That's right. So, uh, so there, there's a few emails. Um, it, it's kind of funny when you think about it, though, because I recently spoke to one of the owners of one of these businesses, and um, they indicated that they actually paid no attention to anything from him because he's he's an ex employee who lasted a week and was asked to leave. Uh, <laughs> yeah. due to his uh, appearance, for one thing, and being unkept, and the concern of patrons seeing a cook making their food that looks like he just crawled out of a dumpster. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. I may have misquoted that person a little bit. <laughs> so uh, this was a long episode, uh, but, uh, but, but we had a, a lot of information to get out at once. Uh, as we work our way through the end of the Napoleon Bonaparte chapter of the story. Still a little bit more to go, but we have a very, very important uh, story arc <laughs> next episode, episode seven. So plot twist. Yes. And uh, some so very, please. very interesting emails from Angry. And into the next episode of Angry Drunk Tales. Yes. And uh, if you happen to have roommates, Particularly if one of them is named Ask yourself Does he send you emails? Does Good night. He? Good night. Be angry. IPMNation.com